Good morning and welcome to our Uncommon Church community. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with First Parish today. When you worship with First Parish, we hope three things for you. That you would experience God, that you would get to know your neighbor a little bit better, and that you would leave this time inspired to live a life of love. If you are joining us live on Sunday, June 6th, we hope that you will chat with us on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you are joining us at a later time, we hope that you will be in touch with us. Feel free to text or call the church phone at 207-846-3773 or visit our website at firstparishyarmouth.org to get to know us a little bit better. When we gather for worship at First Parish, we recognize that every person we meet provides us with an opportunity to know God more fully. I invite you at this time to greet those around you with the peace of Christ. If you're watching by yourself, send someone a text or an email or make a phone call later to let someone else know you see them. The peace of Christ be with you. A few announcements as we, get, as we begin worship today. First, we'll hear from Peg DeBron, the clerk of First Parish Council, with the call to the 2021 annual meeting. Good morning, this is Peg DeBruin, uh, church clerk, with a notice and call of our 2021 annual meeting. The annual meeting of the First Parish Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of Yarmouth, Maine, has been called for Sunday, June 13th at 10 a.m. using Zoom video conferencing to consider action on the following. Article 1. Presentation, discussion, and action on the reports of the various offices, boards, and call-based ministry groups. Article 2. Presentation, discussion, and action on the proposed 2021-2022 fiscal year budget. Article 3. Presentation, discussion, and action on the report of the nominating committee and church council on the proposed slate of church officers, council members, deacons, and trustees to serve through the 2021-2022 fiscal year. Thank you. The 2021 annual report has been distributed digitally to the entire congregation and printed copies have been sent to those with limited access to digital resources. New church directories have also been sent to the entire congregation. Keep checking your mail for these important documents and be in touch with us by phone or email if you have any questions. If there is an error with your address or phone number listed in the directory, please send updated information via email to fpcc at firstparishyarmouth.org. We will be hosting two budget Q&A sessions ahead of the annual meeting regarding the proposed budget for the 2021-2022 physical year. The first session is today Sunday, June 6, and the second session is on Tuesday, June 8 at 7 p.m. To access the Zoom information, please contact Jamie. And so we begin. I invite you to take a deep breath and to center yourself. Let us be the church at worship. Which is more than love. 
join me in the spirit of prayer. Holy One, still us this day to encounter your presence in our worship and in the world. Ready us to hear your voice as it speaks to us in ways that are sometimes dramatic, often ordinary, and always meaningful. Remind us that we are seen as one of your beloved children and help us to see you in one another, especially in those whom we sometimes in busyness or in pride overlook. Amen. Today's reading is from Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem for what is about to be Jesus' grand entrance, which we celebrate as Palm Sunday. In this last story of his miracles before the Palm Sunday story, we find Jesus granting sight to the blind man, Bartimaeus, I love the words in this translation. Jesus does not claim to have healed Bartimaeus. Rather, it is Bartimaeus's faith that has healed him. This is the reading. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they went to the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Seen, heard, known, and loved. There are a few things that every human craves. To be seen, heard, known, and loved as exactly how you are. Over the next four weeks, we'll be using worship as a time to focus in on each of these human experiences as a way to both be reminded of how God sees, hears, knows, and loves us, and how we are called as God's children to see, hear, know, and love others. So our emphasis today is on being seen. I see you. Our scripture tells the story of Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, who is sitting beside the road. He is away from the center of the town, outcasted because of his blindness, lower in status and isolated from the larger community. 
And at the same time that Bartimaeus is sitting by the road, Jesus and his disciples and a crowd of people are on the move, traveling along the road. As soon as Bartimaeus is aware of Jesus's presence, he shouts, he cries out, he exclaims, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He is hushed by people in the crowd. Bartimaeus's voice is silenced, his presence belittled by those around him. Bartimaeus is overlooked, unseen by those in his midst. But Bartimaeus is not discouraged, surprisingly. He shouts even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus' faith is so strong that nothing, nothing can deter his efforts of encountering Jesus, the Messiah, the one who can cure ailments. And the story continues, and Jesus stops. Jesus makes time to listen to Bartimaeus. Jesus sees Bartimaeus. Not assuming that curing his blindness is Bartimaeus's request, Jesus asks, What do you want me to do? And Bartimaeus responds and requests for his blindness to be cured, and Jesus follows through. Bartimaeus's sight is restored in full. He can see. And while this story usually emphasizes the interaction between Jesus and Bartimaeus, a whole crowd, a community, is also part of the story. Maybe an unseen or overlooked part of the story. You hear about them briefly in a rather negative light. They sought to deter Bartimaeus from encountering Jesus at all, further isolating him and disvaluing him. But as the story continues, the community plays an essential role in Bartimaeus' healing. No, they did not have the divine power to restore Bartimaeus' sight. Jesus does that. But I'd like to suggest that this story isn't so much about Bartimaeus having his own sight restored, as it is Bartimaeus being fully seen by Jesus and by members of his own community. New Testament scholar Jamie Clark Souls explains that cure and healing are not the same thing. They cannot be used as synonyms. Rather, cure refers to the elimination of an impairment at the individual level. Jesus cures Bartimaeus' sight. Whereas healing refers to a, a person's experience of integration and reconciliation to self, to God, and to one's community. Healing may or may not involve a cure. Healing is a community-based liberation. The community plays a role in Bartimaeus's healing. By Jesus's invitation, the community facilitates Bartimaeus's liberation from isolation. They assist with his reintegration and reconciliation back into the in-group, back into society, into belonging, and into being claimed by the community. They finally see Bartimaeus in all of his fullness. Even after they tried to hush and silence Bartimaeus, Jesus, Jesus invites the community to have compassion. Can imagine it now, Jesus talking to this community of people. You hear that man calling for me? Do you see him? 
the one you have tried to silence, the one that maybe you have ignored day in and day out and have undervalued from the start, go and bring him to me. Talk to him, see him, don't overlook him any longer. You see, he is one of us, a person seeking to be faithful. Go on and call him to me. I want to see him. And so the community responds to Jesus' invitation, and they engage Bartimaeus, saying, Be courageous. Rise. He's calling you. And having been invited into the process by Jesus, this community are key players in Bartimaeus' healing, not his cure, but his healing. Bartimaeus' story doesn't end when his sight is restored. The last line of this passage reminds us that his journey continues. He doesn't continue on alone like he was before, but now he journeys as part of a community. He receives his sight and follows along the way. Bartimaeus reunites with his community through discipleship, through that understanding that following Jesus is the faithful thing to do. No longer is he isolated on the side of the road. No longer is he hushed or overlooked by the community. He is seen. This crowd of disciples that responded to Jesus' invitation to show compassion, they become his community. They see Bartimaeus in his full humanity, now as brother instead of other. So friends, healing is a communal act. God's transformative and liberative healing is a communal act. And this healing process is just that. It's a process. It takes time, requires intentionality, it tests our patience, it prioritizes forgiveness and reconciliation. The systemic pains and injustices of our society plead for, yearning, for healing. They cry out for healing that involves a whole community. Our participation in healing makes us take time and space to be intentional about what we say and what we do. Communal acts of healing require people to be patient with each other, to take time to listen and respond with compassion for our neighbor and their perspectives. Healing requires that we pay attention to the Bartimaeuses of our world, those who are isolated, oppressed, silenced, hurting, and cast aside, for they too are part of God's beloved community, the body of Christ. So how is it that we will participate in the communal act of healing that God calls us to? How is it that we will come to appreciate one another as full children of God? How is it that we will make manifest Christ's compassion in all of our communities? These are big questions that we are called to sit with. But I think that I know where it begins. I believe that it begins with knowing that you are fully seen by God as beloved. And in turn, we are called to see others as fully human, fully worthy, and fully beloved. See and be seen. Love and be loved. May it be so. Amen.
Beloved, today we gather at the table. We come from many places, differing in age, differing in background, differing in orientation, politics, and perspective. As we come together around the table, we discover that our differences are not something that we just tolerate, but that our differences are indeed a blessing. The more difference that we bring and share with one another, the more fully we experience the presence of the sacred in our midst. So come, children of God, just as you are. Wherever you are on this journey of life, you are welcome here. Here in this place, here in this community, here at this table, come, children of God, come and remember. We remember the stories that Jesus's friends tell. Stories of bread broken and shared, feeding a multitude of people gathered. Stories of being gathered together, enemies and friends. Around tables, simple tables for meals. Stories of unlikely guests revealing the face of the sacred. They say that it was on the night of both celebration and betrayal that Jesus took the bread left over on the table. He blessed it and he broke it, reminding them that, this, that in this breaking of the bread is when we become whole. In losing our lives, we find them, and in serving, we are served. As the grain scattered becomes one in the loaf, when we eat this bread, we become one with one another. They say that he also took the cup. He poured it out and shared it with his friends, remembering with the life-giving breath even now pouring a rhythm through our veins, the breath of life from whence we come, the breath that precedes and follows all that we can see. As the grapes find life in the vine, when we drink this cup, we become one with the source of life itself. And so we pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking that our eyes might be open, that we might see the risen Christ in our midst and indeed in one another. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Beloved, the gifts of God are prepared for the people of Gum. God, so let us share them. This is the bread of life broken for you. This is the cup of love poured out for you. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. 
Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and in peace, rejoicing in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, go from this time knowing that God sees you, and in turn responding by seeing others in the world as fully human, as fully loved, and as fully worthy. Go and see and be seen. Go to love and be loved. Amen. <laughs>